this has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. Jerry, sometimes these things don't mean anything, so both these guys are big. Well, they're both big, and they both uh, exchanged a few words out there when they were given the instructions by the referee and then the back of the day. In fact, they're yelling and screaming at each other. I don't think Dennis likes Foreman, and it's very obvious Foreman not too happy with him either. That's George Foreman is 231 and a half. Dennis 6'3 at 215 pounds. And baby, they don't like each other. Oh, I don't know what happened before this fight, but I, I, I didn't know that they had even met before. All right, 12 rounds, the five-point must system in Florida. And we are ready for really what might be a very, very important heavyweight contest. Well, Dino Dennis. Watching the uh, animosity that they showed towards each other, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to a good scrap. All right, Dennis on your left. He's a mover and a jabber, and he better be that way with Foreman, who's got 40 knockouts and 43 wins. He's got very fast hands as you're watching and witnessing right there with that left jab. And he's going to have to use those fast hands. He's going to have to use the speed on his feet, too. Has he got to move away from the right hand, or which way should he I be I would moving? think that... In all honesty, he should be moving in and side to side. You don't want to be on the end of Foreman's power. That's where he'll get you. That's where he'll hurt you. 20-foot ring. Dennis with 14 knockouts and 28 wins. No losses and only one draw. This is uh, kind of a test for Foreman in the fact that he has trouble with guys that are his size and can move and box, as he showed with Ali when he lost his title. But now, can he come back and show us he's learned something? And remember, Gregorio Peralta, remember, went 20 rounds, lost both fights to Foreman, but did go 20. Well, in the first fight, there was a lot of speculation as to whether he really won it or not, but uh, we're going to have to find out tonight. Pretty good hook by Dino. A little bit open-handed, though. It wasn't a big punch. Well, he's not noted for his devastating power, as Foreman is. But right now, Foreman's kind of check, trying to check him out and see what he's, what he's got in front of him. The common opponent was Scott Ledoux. And, of course, King Roman. Both were knockout victims of George Foreman. And they were a decision by the man on your left. That's Dino Dennis. Well, John Dennis uh, has told me, he's new, Jerry, uh, Foreman has proved, has, it's proven he's not invincible. Uh, Ali got rid of him in eight rounds. He said, I'm going to try to test that stamina of his, and I'm going to try to wear him out and, and probably uh, get rid of him in the latter rounds if I can at all. Remember, Scott Ledoux winning three rounds here on CBS, and Dennis won a 10-round decision over Scott Ledoux also here on CBS. We saw the first few punches from Foreman's arsenal, and nothing really landed with any effect. Boy, he's strong, though, and that's a heavy jab that the man on your right is. Oh, a good left hand, and Dennis is hurt in his own corner. I don't really think he was hurt, yet. Tommy. It was, uh, he was backing up from the punch, so there was no power on it. New England champion on your right. But I'll tell you, the big man shoved him into his own corner. Make no mistake. He's, he's going to have to fight the best fight of his career to even stay in here with this guy. Foreman to the body. Boy, he is big, Jerry. There we got powerful jab with Foreman, and it landed with strength. Run, run himself. A very serious heavyweight. He took 75 off. But at 76, he's done a pretty good job. He beat Ron Lyle and Joe Frazier twice. He's becoming a lot busier this year, uh, beating Ron Lyle, Joe Frazier, and also Scott Ledoux in this, this year. It's scheduled for 12 here at the end of round one. Hi, I'm Connie Stevens. Homecoming days are going on now, so come on over to Ace. Whatever you need for your home this fall, remember, Ace is the place. Lots of bargains all through the store. Paints, appliances, power tools. Your Ace man's got them all. He can save you money on national brands during Ace Homecoming days. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware man. Are you like me? Crazy about cars? Really love that machine of yours? And right about now, you should be putting in Prestone, too. Antifreeze isn't permanent. It wears out. So every fall, my baby here gets a fresh feel of Prestone Antifreeze. It fights freeze-ups and helps protect your cooling system against corrosion. Prestone, too. You know it protects. This is my Packard, and I know Prestone protects. That's Foreman's record, the only loss to Muhammad Ali, of course, in Africa. 
and he's after Dino Dennis, unbeaten. Well, that's a rather imposing record, isn't it? 44 fights, 43 wins, 40 knockouts. I'm sure glad I'm on the other side of it now, Tom. Only eight of George Foreman's fights have gone five rounds or more. Only eight. Well, uh, that can, that's a test to his power, his punch, and his very, as is ob obvious, his awesome strength. But now, what has he done after that fifth round? Good hook by Dino Dennis, and he lands two straight good right hands. Hey, he came to fight. You can see that by the words they exchanged at the uh, right, referee's push instructions. Out, push out, push out. Just keep in mind that Foreman has trouble with tall heavyweights, like Muhammad Ali, maybe like Dino right, Dennis. Right, right, That's right. right. He's six foot three, and let's let's say something about Dennis. He's 29 wins, no losses, and one draw. So that tells you that he's not a bad fighter. corner now they're really just locked head to head Dennis is not backing off this is round two action of what is supposed to be 12. this is a mistake on Dennis's part he does not have the power of Ron Lyle Ron knocked George down but he doesn't have that power he cannot exchange with him he has to move and box it Jerry you've worked with both of them as sparring partners is Foreman the strongest right, fighter you've ever been in yourself. with? That's it. Foreman is the strongest man I have ever been in a ring with. And in my opinion, right, come on, over the Push years out. of the That's heavyweight it. division, he has got to be the most awesome physical specimen that has ever been in the heavyweight division. All right, good action by Dino Dennis, who doesn't seem to be too impressed, but a lot of people aren't until, oh, uppercut by Foreman. Right hand by Dennis. He, he is not being intimidated by Foreman at all, and I think he feels he can win this fight. And as long as you got two fighters in there that believe in themselves, then you're going to have a heck of a fight. What kind of a body puncher is George Foreman? Well, oh, most of his body punches are swings, but they land with, with power and authority because he has power and authority. Bill Clancy has tried to cut down the long arcs of those Foreman punches, and he's done a good job. Woo, and this fight's back. And a good hook by Jennison out of there. Those are heavy punches that are being thrown by George Foreman. Lands on that hook. I don't think it's bothered Dennis at all. We right may be in for a heck of a fight, Tom. Right above us, you can see about 10 seconds left in round two, and Dennis is hanging tough. Well, I know for one thing. We'll be back with more action from the Sporting Forum after this word from your local station. This is CBS. Is it safe? It's what safe? Is it safe? Dustin Hoffman. Lawrence Olivier. Is it safe? No, it's not safe. It's very dangerous. Marathon Man, a thriller, rated R. Now at the Chinese Village, La Mirada Drive-In, and in theaters in Orange County. United Airlines makes me feel like the boss. They know I'm a busy woman. So now they've given me more carry-on space than any other airline, which I prefer to think of as carry-off space. I grab my case, an hat from above, completely unsquashed. I get my clothes, free of wrinkles, from the closet. I whisk my suitcase from United's brand new luggage racks, and the boss is on her way. Fly the friendly skies of United. Where you are the boss. Channel 2 Newsroom at 5 and 11. Round 3, Dino Dennis, from born in Italy, but raised in Massachusetts. Boy, he's a tall, good-looking athlete, but he's in there with a guy that is really strong. Sure, he is that. I'll tell you, I had him as a sparring partner, Tom, and he doesn't uh, give quarter to anybody. Believe me, he respects his own ability and has confidence in himself, and he's showing himself tonight. Good inside punches. A pretty good combination rattled off there by Dino Dennis. But I'll tell you, look at the big guy. He can hit you in the kidney. It'll hurt tomorrow or a week later. Everything's going to hurt. But hey, Dennis wants to win this fight. And what a feather in his cap that what he's doing right now. He's showing people that, hey, that this guy's not so invincible All that right, I come on, boys, cannot stay that with it. him. That's it. It's Al Edison in there, the referee, who has done some big fights before. the 
referee, Anderson has a mic on, and we can listen to it right here on CBS. But he's not having to really part these guys too much. Not a lot. They're doing some good fighting. That was a wicked shot by George Foreman there. Muhammad Ali is up in New York City probably watching this tonight here on CBS and wondering. Wondering whether he should really be retired or uh, come back and fight Ali. I'll tell you, watching something right, fight Foreman, excuse me, watching something. Dennis is proving that uh, Foreman can be beaten right now. Okay, a good left hand, a big jab, just knocked the head back, two of them. Dennis gets away from the neutral corner now, moves back out. Foreman's after him now, and Dennis doesn't look like he's moving as much. No, no, I think he got bothered by one of those shots. He slowed him down a little okay. bit. Round three. A lot of people said it wouldn't go past two, and we're in the third. A good right hand. Look at this, look at and Dennis is definitely hurt. Dennis hit by a big right hand by George Foreman at 231 pounds. Here with the right hand, it followed by a hook, Tommy, and that really bothered him. But look at him, he's staying in there. His mistake is doing, he should be hanging on. Not exchanging with him, he doesn't have Foreman's power. Foreman just standing right on top in Dennis' corner. Round three. And he's got to hang on, he's got to grab him, he's got to protect himself. Foreman has already proven too many times in the past with 40 knockouts that he can hurt you. So why is the man exchanging with him? Dennis is trying to hold on now. Edison parts him. He's trying to get combination together and get George Foreman off of him, but he just stalks him and finds him again. Well, I'm, I'm really surprised at Dennis. You know, he's, look, he's hurt again. I don't know if he's gonna, I don't think he's going to last around. Not at this point. All right. Oh, yeah. he's still on his feet at the end of round three. I think this is an AMC pacer. You're only half right. It's true, it has a wide ride and lots of room. But there's another half that has a wide hatch and a wide designed cargo area, so everything's easy to reach. What you end up with is a whole new type of wagon. The AMC Pacer Wide Wagon. It sets us apart from all other wagons. And with expanded buyer protection plan two, there's more to an AMC. All right, while we're waiting for Dino Dennis, don't forget next Friday at 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS, CBS presents live coverage of the ABA champion New York Nets, taking on Rick Barry and the Golden State Warriors in regular season NBA action. Friday night at 11.30 Eastern Time for the Nets in Golden State. He's not a basketball player, but this guy is as strong as an ox. That's George Foreman. He can punch, and I don't understand Dennis' tactics in the last round. Gil Clancy was yelling and screaming at the referee. I don't know what he was yelling about, but you know Foreman's going to come out and take it straight to Dennis now. He wanna try to, he's going to try to get rid of him. Now, if Dennis plays it right, he should be moving and staying completely away from Foreman. Dennis, has, wear a, himself out. Dennis has a cut high on his left uh, brow, eyebrow there. He does not look very steady here in the fourth round to me. No, he doesn't. And, uh, and George uh, Foreman looks stronger. Well, he knows what he did to him last round, so he, all he did was give him confidence. Remember, Foreman got off the deck when Rod Lyle knocked him down there two times in Vegas. Break it. All right, and he got back up. Here you heard Edson, the referee, talking to him. Right. He took, uh, Foreman took an awful lot out of Dennis in that last round. I think he took a lot of confidence out of him, too. Dennis had the reputation of being a sticker and a mover and a jabber. But he mixed up with a heavy artillery, and he's in trouble again. A left hand did it this time. Another left hand jab. That's a heavy I, jab. I think this will be the last round of the fight. Eh? Hey, see, John's a nice guy, but he's uh, he's making a mistake. You can't exchange with this man. Dennis throwing the big hooks, and if he misses that, George Foreman's right inside All right. him. When he hits you on the arms, it hurts. 230 pounds. I don't understand John. What is he doing? He should be tying him up over there. He doesn't. He doesn't have the power to come out of it with a, a shot. Foreman is just measuring the man now and working from side to side. Dennis trying to, hey, keeps it alive with the left and right. Come back with the left hook himself. Left hand by Foreman. Dennis is head shot back. The right hand by Foreman. Dennis is cut badly above the left eye. But you know something? Foreman is definitely tiring, but uh, can, can Dennis last this assault? 
about six unanswered punches thrown by the former heavyweight champion on the right of your screen. John Dennis's corner threw water on him to kind of refresh him, to bring him back. I don't know if it's going to help. He, oh. he gets another, hit another, oh. hit another hurt. Big hooks by a tremendous specimen. What do you want to do, Al? He's and stopping it. Braverman, and the referee asked Al Braverman, what do you want to do, Al? He said, stop it. And I've got to respect the manager for that. He was taking a beating. It appeared there was no way that Dino Dennis could fight off this man, George Foreman. And Foreman was looking to Edson, the referee, to make sure it was stopped. I, I, I've got to give his corner credit, and I've got to give the referee credit. And I We've got to give Big George Foreman a heck of a lot of credit. This guy he wants the heavyweight title back again, and he's working on Dino Dennis in round four. Look at this action. He kept throwing wicked shots, and oh, you have to respect John Dennis because he took some shots that no other man could take, and he did not go down from it. Oh. I give him a lot of credit. It was Braverman that came out of the corner and stopped it. Dino Dennis did not stop. As, as you noticed, just the... Just a moment ago, the uh, referee asked, he said, what do you want to do, Al? And he said, stop it. I don't want my boy to get hurt. Now, Braverman moves into the left of your screen. There he is saying, come on, Edson. My guy's had enough. George Foreman, though, stopping the crown, the heavyweight title. Two minutes. One bad fight in Venezuela, and George Foreman wants a shot. Referee stops the bout. Winner by a TKO, George Foreman. He is massive, he is well-conditioned, and under Gil Clancy, he looks like a heck of a lot different fighter. Well, he's, uh, he's a good fighter, he's a powerful fighter. I think uh, he will be reckoned with. We'll be back. We'll be back with Brent Musburger talking to George Foreman, the winner of this heavyweight clash, in just a moment. Sharp, beautiful pictures in minutes with Pronto, Polaroid's low-priced automatic, and the new Super Clear SX70 film. It's clear, it's got to be Pronto. It's clear, it's got to be Pronto. It's clear for the right Pronto. It's clear, it's got to be Pronto. What do you say? Pronto! And it took my administration to get things moving ahead in this session. That may be, Congressman. However, it took my party to bring a sound fiscal policy to this state. Gentlemen, please. All I know is it took Schlitz to bring the taste to life. Introducing Schlitz Light Beer. Less filling and one-third fewer calories than our other quality beer. But all the taste you'd expect from Schlitz. It took Schlitz to bring the taste to life. Gentlemen, it takes a good head for politics. Hey, look. I want to show you something great. This coffee maker from Norelco. The Dollar Brew. You know that the drip coffee makers are set at the factory their way. But with the Norelco Dollar Brew, you dial to the taste you want. Light, medium, dark. Isn't that terrific? Pay less, pay more, but you can't buy a finer coffee maker. Norelco has a line of Dollar Brew coffee makers for you to choose from. And only Norelco has Dollar Brew. And we're back right here in the middle of the ring with George Foreman on my left and Gil Clancy, who has done a magnificent job handling him. George, how would you evaluate your performance as you look right up into our cameras here? Well, actually, to be honest with you, I didn't intend to really finish him until about the eighth, ninth, tenth round, but I got him hurt over in the fourth corner uh, about the end of the round, so I decided I better go on and finish him because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm landing punches and they weren't effective. The body punches really did it, but I think that the, the, the finish came... In, in due time, the referee should have stepped in a little earlier, but the guy was courageous. He would take those punches and try to land one of his own. So you have to score him high. He went longer with me on those kind of punches than Joe Frazier or anyone else. So he raised high in my book, but the main objective now is getting that championship form, getting the World Heavyweight Championship. These other fights are very important, but in my mind, there only exists one piece of tension, and that's for the Heavyweight Championship of the world. And I do like, I would like to avenge the only defeat I ever had against you know who. I'm not going to give him no publicity. He doesn't need it anymore, George, I'll yeah. tell you. But do you consider yourself now the finest heavyweight, like many of us who watch you and the other heavyweights in action? Do you no, think you you're don't, number one? You don't score a guy and call him the finest heavyweight just because he can give it. 
it's the ones who can take it that you got to score heavy. And when I get in there and can take it like this, man, then I think that you can rate me one of the good heavyweights in the, in the country. Right now, I'm creeping up on that kind of a uh, potential. But right now, I can give it, but who knows whether I can take it like this, man. He tried his best, and that scores him higher than any heavyweight in the division. George, what a turnaround you are as a personality. Uh, now you reach deep down when someone asks you a tough question. You're willing to come up and meet the press. Uh, you don't hide from people. What's going on in George well, Foreman's mind? Well, I'm intending to have a cure for cancer before I die. And the more money I make, the more I can give to the Cancer Foundation. And I hope to have it in the next few days. If I can fight every few months, give a lot of money there, then I'll have a cure for cancer. And that's better than being champion of the world and a whole lot of money in the bank, isn't it? It sure is, uh, George. Nothing better than that. Right. You know, sometimes a fighter is no better than the men around him. And I want you to tell the fans Look, what Gil Clancy is, has meant to Gil you. Gil Clancy is high, but this is Charles Shafty. He lives with me. Charles is the one that keeps yeah, going, right? Yeah, right. Gil Clancy is the man, the technical man. This is John Falk. And of course, my main man, Don King, uh, Lamar Davis. <laughs> George, before we go on, I want to talk to you. I want to ask Gil a question. Gil, what about the change that's come over George Foreman? Well, I, as I have said many, many times before, George always had all the ability in the world. He's a happy guy now. He's a, he relax, a relaxed guy, and all that ability is coming out. You know, I know this. like to say hello to his mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. Hello, Mom. <laughs> I don't know if the FCC allows that, folks, but we just did it. Listen, the trainer, Al Braverman, was up throwing water on his fighter, and you were furious over there at the corner. I sure was. I was complaining to the referee, but... I wouldn't want the other guy disqualified. I, it was better that George entered it this way. All right, George, who's I next? Tell, I had to tell Gil, hey, Irishman, get out of here. <laughs> George, who's next for right you? Right now, I want some butterflies. I like the championship of the world. And whoever the WBA or WBC recognize the champion, I'll fight them. If they want to recognize me, I won't take it unless I can fight the best contender around. All right, George, congratulations. And also to Gil Clancy and the entire yeah, entourage. Guys. George Foreman here has stopped Dino Dennis in the fourth round. And don't forget that we have more heavyweight action coming up here from the Sportatorium in Hollywood, Florida. And let's see if we can get a monitor turned around. Can somebody yank a monitor around here for us? We can take a look at this, George. Here we are right now. George, you walk right over here with me. Here is some of the closing moments of action here. You can see now the punishment, and you think that it should have been stopped at this point. Right. I was, I had my rhythm going. I'd hit him and jump from one side to the other. There was no way he'd been able to land a good counterpunch, but I got the rhythm going now. And the man, is, he's done his best, but he's not going to quit because he's a tremendous athlete at heart. So someone else has to come to his rescue. rescue. You know, George, I, I liked him in the I second round. I looked at the referee right there to stop it, but he wouldn't. I yeah, actually you did. were turning to look. You know, yeah. I liked Dino Dennis's performance in the second round. I thought he irritated you a bit there. More than that. <laughs> that, that, that jab yeah. still would be the thing that, that you've got to work on defending against, right? The guy who can move and stick, that's what you've got to worry well, about. Well, what I'm trying to worry about now is just beating up everybody I face in the ring and do a good job of getting out of the ring unhurt and be thankful to God because he's the one who does all of this for me. And that's all important right now. I can work on jails, but that's don't win fights. <laughs> now, you, we have mentioned Kenny Norton, Muhammad Ali. Of course, you want that championship back, and tonight you defeat Dino Dennis. Some of the other fighters that might step into the ring with George Foreman, who would you name? Right now, I just want anybody. I'm, I'm working close at hand with Don King, as you know. He's, I think, have been the action mind behind George Foreman because you leave it to me, I'd be on my uh, couple hundred acre ranch in Marshall, Texas, uh, cooking uh, homemade eggs, uh, you know, homemade eggs homegrown eggs or uh, uh, vegetables out of the garden. But he pushes me in, so right now I just want to stay active. I don't want to go a whole month without fighting. Now, you're going to come into New York this week, I understand. Right. And on Friday night, you're going to be part of a panel over at CBS, and we're going to take a look at that controversial Muhammad Ali, Ken Norton fight, and you're going to be one of the expert boxing men that we're going to have scoring it. I understand that we've got Floyd Patterson, Joe Frazier. We may even be able to talk Howard Cosell into coming over there and scoring that fight uh, along with you. George. Mainly, if we, if we can get an adept and a professional man like yourself, that's enough. <laughs> kind words indeed. And that is it. Next Friday night at CBS, we will take another look at that Muhammad Ali, Ken Norton fight. And you can decide for yourself whether or not Ollie indeed remains the heavyweight champion. We've got more heavyweight action. Tom Brookshire and Jerry Corey have rested their vocal cords, and we'll be back. The Sportatorium in Hollywood, Florida, in just a moment. Mario Tenio. Scouts for John Mugabe.